If you're a dog lover or if you have dogs, have you ever wondered why so many dogs are suffering from health issues? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seen more health issues with dogs than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place where we can look to support any dog's health, and that's their food. So she decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Now, Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the health healthiest ingredients on the planet, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. And I actually love giving Mojo this as a topper. I feel good that there are no fillers and it's also air dried. So that means it retains more nutrients. Mojo's usually pretty picky about what he eats. So I'm glad that he now enjoys every meal. And now you can treat your dogs to healthy, nutritious food. Go to badlandsfood.com slash datable and order right now to get up to 50% off your first regular price order with a 90 day money back guarantee. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B A D L A N D S food.com slash D A T E A B L E today. Just a quick announcement before we get into the episode. Today is the last day to sign up for this cohort of Finding Your Person. If you're ready to take control of your love life, then this program is for you, and we hope to see you inside. The link to sign up is in the show notes or go to findingyourperson.com. If you have any questions, feel free to email or DM us before midnight tonight, PST, when the program will close. So we hope to see you inside and on to the episode. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Friends, we're back with another dating question for Brunch Talk. We hope you're ready and hungry because this is a question that's been on many people's minds. And this is a good one. I think a lot of people could relate to this one. And the question is, what would you do if you had judgmental friends or family when you're dating? And for more context, I find my friends will judge a potential romantic interest by their looks and comment on how they aren't good enough for me. I'm not a teenager. I'm in my early 30s. It makes me feel confused and secure and like my standards aren't high enough. Help. Oh, gosh. It doesn't feel good. I mean, I understand that your friends may have good intentions of saying you could do better, but it doesn't make you feel good at all. So you're I feel like in this circumstance, it's good to sit down with your friends and tell them that this does not make you feel good. It's not constructive. It's not productive. It actually makes you feel more insecure and it makes you question every person that you date and all of your dating choices. At the end of the day, Your friends and your family are not dating this person. No. Unless they are terrible to you. (laughs) They really cannot comment about looks and if they're good enough. What does that even mean? Yeah. That's like such a BS metric. I think looks especially, it's like everyone's attracted to different things. If you're attracted to the person... Why do they care? Yeah. Like, why does it need to have some certain like looks metric? Like, that's absurd. I don't want to minimize this, though, because I know one of my best friends is going through this and it's really freaking Mm. hard. Like her family is doing exactly what this person talked about is really making it difficult to have a relationship with someone because they don't feel like they're good enough. And it's incredibly painful. It causes a huge rift between people. So I think ultimately, and this is like easier said than done, depending on your family, but it comes down to like, do they want a relationship with you at the end of the day? Like by focusing so much on your partner and how they're not the right fit and good enough, if you truly are happy, I know. like in this scenario though, like if let's say you break up with this partner, it feels like a lose-lose to me because then you hold resentment to your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And if you're with them, they are not you know, encouraging and supportive. So really the only way is for them to get on board and for you to stay true to what you believe in. Like, I think I really do admire people that despite friends and family coming down hard can be like, no, this actually is the right person for me. And I want to be with this person. We need to understand there's a difference in the tone of how someone criticizes your partner. They're either judgmental, which is going for all the superficial shit. Your standards are too low with this person. They're not good enough for you. Or there's this constructive tone, which is I 
feel like you are a different person when you're around this partner, or I feel like you seem very down or not as ha- yes. happy or you know optimistic as before. That's constructive. So understand the difference between the two. If someone is judgmental about your partner, I read this great quote that said, if someone can't be happy for you, it means they can't be happy for themselves. Mm-hmm. Like there is something going on with themselves where they feel like maybe they're not at a point in their life that they want to be, or they're not with a partner that they think they should be with. And they project that onto you. So even just understanding that removes the burden of that situation, right? Because now you're like, okay, this is something going on with them. And then maybe just turn to your friend and say, I actually feel like there may be something going on with you. Yeah. Do you want to discuss anything, right? I've seen a shift in who you have become. So what's going on in your life? I mean, I'll speak from experience. I think that happens a lot with friendships. Like usually when you're like, oh, this person's not good enough for you or they're not attractive enough. Because ultimately, like what you said, I like this, like, is it constructive or not? But it's what you're saying is one of them is all about you as the person, like you as the friend. And then the other is all about the other person. Like yeah, how you are around the person. Like I notice you're not yourself or you're not happy versus they're too short or they're not educated enough or whatever it is. So I think dissecting those two is super important. I agree with you 100%. But I know firsthand when I have put down friends, partners, it's because I didn't want to lose them. Mm. I didn't want to be the only single person anymore. Mm, I mean, I will never do this again, ever. I learned the hard way, but I'm so like embarrassed to even say this, but like three of my friends, we had an intervention with our friend about her partner, just saying like, we didn't think he was good enough for her. Mm -hmm. And at the time, two of us were single, including myself. (laughs) The other one was in like a relationship was barely early off the ground. It was also kind of like in flux. And we had no right to say this to her. And I think a lot of it was coming from like, yeah, he wasn't the mold that we thought that she should be with. But what does that mean? Like, why do we even have that mold? And if we're not going to be best friends with her partner, like he's not the type of person we'd be friends with. Like, who cares? As long as he's treating her well, we're not the ones dating him at the end of the day. But I think a lot of it came from the deep down fear that we were like losing her to this person. And luckily, she was strong enough to just be like, no, this is my person and I'm going to stick with it. And now they're married with kids. So it's like, why do we have the right to say any of that to her? We didn't. I know. If your friend came to you and was complaining to you about their partner, saying, I don't know if this is the right person for me, he doesn't treat me very well. Yeah, then you have every right to say, he's not the right person for you. Like, I can see that. But if your friend seems happy or at least on a track to being in a healthy relationship, Right. It's like there must be something going on for you to be that judgy. It's hard, though, because I feel like now because of that experience, I swing the opposite way that I'll never say anything. Mm. And I remember like a friend, you know, she met someone new, didn't really like go out anymore with her friends, stopped communicating. And I was like, oh, she just like got a new boyfriend. That's how she is. And it turned out he was like actually like abusive. Mm. And I didn't say anything ever because like I was like, I'm not going to get involved with this. And I think like there is a line of like, when do you say something versus when do you leave it alone as a friend? I think it really comes down to behavior at the end of the day. Is it that you're just like focusing on the superficials or like how the person is treating your friend? Well, then it goes back to this sounds harsh, but it's everyone's responsibility for themselves to express what is going on in their relationship whatever they choose to express. But as a friend on the other side of this, all we can say is, I will be there for you no matter what. That is not specific to your relationship or to your partner. I will be there for you no matter what. Okay, then your friend can interpret that in whichever way you want. So I think going back to the person who asked this question, if you have judgmental friends, you can just say, all I'm asking for you guys to do is just be there for me. Yeah. I don't need your opinion. (laughs) I don't need you to intervene. I don't need you to be the third in this relationship. Yeah. Just be there for me. Like I will be there for you. I really like that. I want to go into parents because I think that's like another slippery slope (laughs) that's a little different than friends. But before we do, let's hear a few messages from our sponsors. 
This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style, spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first First month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. Living with ADHD can be a challenge and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge. We've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Online visits, refills, and a 24-7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Done's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. This episode is sponsored by Fleur. You know on the show, we're all about finding you different avenues to meet new people and find the right apps for you, especially if you're the type of person who wants to explore your sexual side and desires a bit more. Fleur is a sex-positive dating app that prioritizes women's desires. Hell yeah. Sex is not something to be ashamed of. It's probably one of the most essential components of a relationship. Yet, especially for women, there's so much shame around the topic. So we love that with Fleur, you can explore yourself in your desires with other like-minded people. And that's the key. We love how open-minded Fleur is. Whether it's for one-night stands, friends with benefits, sexting, no-strings-attached encounters, or long-term relationships. There are no forbidden desires, only mandatory respect and consent. So one of my friends tried Fleur the other day, and she absolutely loved how it felt more like a party than a dating app. She also found it fun to play the Fleur Sparks game, which is a card game in the chats that helps people on the app learn more about each other in a way that feels a bit more lighthearted and fun. So if you're looking for a new avenue that sparks passion or you just want to try something new, definitely visit Fleur.com or download Fleur in the App Store because pleasure awaits. As you may have already heard by now, enrollment is open for our Finding Your Person program. This is a self-paced program that allows you to get crystal clear on what you're looking for in a relationship and how to actually get it. And I know what you're probably thinking by now. Could this really work? Is this just some BS we're trying to sell you? And trust me, I would be thinking the same thing. But we wouldn't have been doing this program for the last three years if we didn't really believe in it. And this is the program that helped me find love again after a devastating breakup. Remember that? As some of you may recall, I went through a horrific breakup last May due to infidelity. And after spending five years with this person, I wasn't sure if I could find love again. But I quickly remembered I am equipped with these tools and fundamentals of what I want in a relationship and how to ask for it. And it's all the learnings from this program that not only helped me get over the breakup, but also thrive post-breakup, which led to finding love again shortly after, and pretty epic love too. So we've seen firsthand change with the daters that go through the program and how much more fulfilling and enjoyable dating has become for them. No longer are they feeling burnt out by dating or feeling disenchanted because 
when you're equipped with the tools of how to have agency over your love life, you don't worry about the small stuff that wastes your time. So I wouldn't feel right to keep this program from anyone. Everyone deserves love, especially the type of love that they want. So registration for the program will be open until Sunday, April 14th. And if you're thinking of joining, we love to have you sign up now because there is a personal component to this where Julie and I will do a call with you. That's why spots are limited. That's why if you sign up earlier, we can guarantee you a spot in this cohort. You can find all the info in our show notes or go to findingyourperson.com. Easy to remember. All right, let's get back to this episode. So parents, I think this one's harder than friends in a way. This one's hard. This one's hard. Parents, I think, are harder. But I think a lot of times parents, it comes from some vision they hold of who they thought you'd end up with. Yeah. And when someone is not that vision, depending on your parents, they may have a lot of opinions. And I think ultimately, again, it comes down to all the stuff we've been talking about. Like, is it that this just superficials or the way that you are or the way they're treating you? Those are all very different things. But let's say it's just superficial stuff because that's what this listener wrote in too. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to like, hey, I know you have a vision of who you thought I'd end up with. I know myself and what's right for me. And I know once you get to know this person more, you'll see why we're right for each other. I totally get how hard it is for parents because they have one goal, which is to make sure that you are safe. Yeah. Right? They want to make sure that you are taken care of. And if they don't sense that or they don't know if you're getting that or not, of course, they're going to start questioning if you're with the right person. But this also is a great time, and I've learned this with my parents, is instead of battling them Mm. and trying to defend my partner, I actually want to understand from my parents' point of view, what is it about my partner or this relationship Mm. that's making you feel like I am unsafe Mm. or I am not taken care of? Because maybe there are some things that I'm overlooking. Yeah. It's always good to understand where your parents are coming from. Hope. Hopefully, they're on the same team. And if you seek understanding what they're feeling in your relationship, then they'll also start be willing to see what you're seeing in that relationship. You know, yeah. you don't need to defend your partner, but you can start saying, well, I feel safe and I feel taken care of in these ways. It just opens up a conversation. I think that's really good. I think it also comes down to the what the reason is that your parents think that you're unsafe. I agree with you fully. It comes down to them wanting to protect you. Yeah. But sometimes we have to acknowledge our parents grew up in different generations than us too. Totally. Like if let's say the comments are racist or like classist, Mm -hmm. like maybe that's not actually justified. And totally. I think by understanding though, like you were saying, opening the conversation of what is the concern then you can say like, oh, is this actually feedback that I should take into account? Or is this just them living in a different generation, them holding views that are not aligned with mine, whatever that may be. And I mean, we could go into a whole episode on that topic alone. Those are really hard situations to be in when your parents, like there's nothing wrong with your partner. They just don't accept them Mm -hmm. because of their own past views. So understanding and really coming to terms of where it's coming from is so pivotal and how you address this? Like, do you lean on their advice versus like, do you hold your own and be like, actually, no, this is not how it is. Right. These are all good data points for you to understand, but also to seek understanding from your friends and your family. So thank you for this question. It's a difficult situation to navigate, but you can either grow from this or you can just die from this. So why don't you use this opportunity to really grow from it? I think the last thing I want to add to this too is sometimes your friends and family could walk all over you if you're wishy-washy yourself. So holding your ground, especially if it's all superficial and it's really nothing to do with like the way someone treats you or anything of that sort yeah. and the way you are around them, like it's purely like they don't think they're good enough for some superficial reason. I think this is your time to really stand your ground. And that's what's going to get them to back off more than like fighting with them, just being really transparent and being like, I believe in this relationship. Because at that point, like, what can they really do? Right. Well, disown you, but that's cool. (laughs) 
<laughs> Maybe it's worth it for a few years. Then you got to decide <laughs> what's worth it to you, ultimately. Thank you for this question. For all of you, you're going through stuff too. Ask your dating questions. You can email us, hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast, or you can write us a rating and review like this person did, and you get bumped to the front of the queue. So just give us five stars, and in the body of your review, you can just ask your question there. Okay, we'll see you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.